Ever wondered what de Sitter space is? First off, de Sitter space is named after the Dutch astronomer Willem de Sitter. It's a solution to Einstein's field equations of general relativity. In simple terms, de Sitter space describes a universe that's expanding at an accelerating rate. In de Sitter space there's no matter, only a positive cosmological constant. This constant acts like a repulsive force, pushing everything apart. It's a bit like having a vacuum with an inherent energy. First things first, space can either be flat or curved. If it's flat, we call it Minkowski space or space-time when we're talking about four dimensions. But when space has curvature, things get interesting. Positive curvature gives us de Sitter space, while negative curvature results in anti de Sitter space. Think of positive curvature like the surface of a sphere. On the other hand, negative curvature is more like a section of a hyperboloid. A common misconception is that only a de Sitter universe could be finite, similar to the surface of a sphere. However, flat and anti de Sitter spaces aren't necessarily infinite. Their topology can be unbounded yet finite, much like a torus. So, what sets de Sitter and anti de Sitter spaces apart? A de Sitter universe features a positive cosmological constant and a positive energy density. Conversely, an anti de Sitter universe has both a negative cosmological constant and negative energy density. One prominent example is the ad SCFT correspondence, short for anti de Sitter conformal field theory. But, why is space expanding? In general relativity, we often hear that space is expanding. To understand this, we need to rethink our traditional concept of space. Normally, we measure the distance between objects with a ruler in a Cartesian coordinate system. However, in general relativity, the coordinate system is defined differently. Space, in this context, is more appropriately termed as interaction distance. Imagine two charged objects traveling with one in front of the other. As they move, the interaction distance between them changes because the charge grows weaker in their direction of travel. But if you were to measure the distance with a Cartesian ruler, you wouldn't notice any change in the distance between the centers of the objects. General and special relativity have altered the meaning of space and distance in ways that can be perplexing. For two charged or gravitational objects traveling along, one after the other, relativity tells us that the interaction distance changes because of our relative motion. Yet it doesn't provide a reason for why relative motion has this effect. In contrast, a Cartesian theory might suggest that the interaction strength between moving charges or distant galaxies changes because light loses energy when it propagates through a turbulent ether, or that the ether causes drag on the objects, altering them. What is a graviton? And why does its existence stir so much debate among scientists? In many theories of quantum gravity, a graviton is a hypothetical elementary particle that mediates the force of gravity. Just as photons are the force carriers for electromagnetism, gravitons are proposed to be the force carriers for gravity. But here's where things get interesting. General relativity, the cornerstone of our understanding of gravity, does not actually require the existence of gravitons. So why do some physicists still consider gravitons? The idea stems from attempts to unify general relativity with quantum mechanics, essentially trying to create a theory of everything. Freeman Dyson, a renowned physicist, was notably skeptical about the existence of gravitons. He argued that detecting a single graviton would be practically impossible due to its incredibly weak interaction with matter. What is quantization and why is it necessary for general relativity? To understand quantization, we need to go back to the basics of quantum mechanics. In classical physics, quantities like energy and momentum are continuous. However, quantum mechanics tells us that these quantities are actually discrete, existing in quantized packets. This means that energy, for example, can only take on specific, discrete values, much like steps on a staircase rather than a ramp. So, why is quantization necessary for general relativity? General relativity, formulated by Albert Einstein, describes gravity as a curvature of space-time caused by mass and energy. To create a theory of everything that unifies general relativity with quantum mechanics, we need to quantize the gravitational field. In other words, we need to describe gravity in terms of discrete units, much like how quantum mechanics describes other fundamental forces. This process is known as quantum gravity. But quantizing gravity is no small feat. Unlike the other fundamental forces, gravity is incredibly weak and acts over vast distances. This makes the mathematics of quantum gravity exceedingly complex. Theories like string theory and loop quantum gravity attempt to tackle this challenge. Why do we require distinct constructs such as Hilbert, 
de Sitter, anti de Sitter, and Minkowski spaces to describe physical phenomena. In quantum mechanics, Hilbert space is indispensable. It provides the setting for wave functions and operators, allowing us to describe the probabilistic nature of particles and their interactions. De Sitter space describes a universe dominated by a positive cosmological constant, leading to accelerated expansion. The theory of relativity, it consists of two parts, special relativity and general relativity. Special relativity, introduced in 1905, deals with the physics of objects moving at constant speeds, particularly those close to the speed of light. It introduced the famous equation E equals mc square, which shows the equivalence of mass and energy. General Relativity, published in 1915, extends these concepts to include acceleration and gravity. It describes gravity not as a force, but as the curvature of spacetime caused by mass and energy. This curvature affects the motion of objects, leading to phenomena such as the bending of light around massive objects and the expansion of the universe. Now, let's connect this to the cosmology of the primordial universe. This field refers to the study of the universe's origins and early development. According to the Big Bang theory, the universe began as an extremely hot and dense point around 13.8 billion years ago and has been expanding ever since. The theory predicts that the universe's expansion rate is influenced by its matter and energy content, leading to the concepts of dark matter and dark energy. Now what is the de-sitter swampland conjecture? This proposal in theoretical physics suggests that certain conditions must be met for a consistent theory of quantum gravity. It posits that de Sitter vacua which are solutions to Einstein's field equations with a positive cosmological constant are not allowed in a consistent theory of quantum gravity. The de Sitter swampland conjecture is still a topic of active research and debate among physicists. The vile conjectures concern the generating functions derived from counting the number of solutions to equations over finite fields. They consist of four main statements, the rationality, the functional equation, the Betty numbers, and the Riemann hypothesis for varieties over finite fields. Each of these conjectures has been proven, with the final piece of the puzzle being solved by Pierre Deligne in the 1970s. Polignac's conjecture states that for any positive even number n, there are infinitely many prime gaps of size n. In other words, there are infinitely many pairs of consecutive prime numbers that differ by n. This conjecture generalizes the twin prime conjecture, which is the case n equals 2, Despite significant numerical evidence supporting Polignac's conjecture, it remains unproven to this day. Ken's conjecture is a mathematical hypothesis that suggests a unique relationship between prime numbers and specific geometric patterns. According to this conjecture, for any given prime number p, there exists a corresponding geometric shape whose vertices are also prime numbers, forming a harmonious pattern within a defined mathematical space. The origins of Ken's conjecture trace back to the early 21st century, when mathematician Ken Thompson first proposed the idea. He was inspired by the natural occurrence of prime numbers and their seemingly random distribution, yet he believed there was an underlying order waiting to be discovered. The conjecture posits that these geometric shapes, which can range from simple polygons to complex polyhedra, reveal hidden symmetries and connections among prime numbers that have yet to be fully understood. Despite its elegance, Ken's conjecture remains unproven. At the end, explore various theories that attempt to explain the origins, structure, and ultimate fate of the universe. These include the Big Bang theory, steady-state theory, inflationary theory, and more. Each theory offers a unique perspective on the cosmos, supported by different sets of observational evidence and mathematical models. First, we have the Big Bang theory, the most widely accepted cosmological model. It suggests that the universe began as a singularity approximately 13.8 billion years ago and has been expanding ever since. This theory is supported by a wealth of observational evidence, including the cosmic microwave background radiation and the redshift of distant galaxies. Next, the steady state theory presents an alternative view. Proposed in the mid 20th century, it posits that the universe has no beginning or end in time and that new matter is continuously created to maintain a constant density as the universe expands. Although less favored today, another key theory is the inflationary theory, which builds on the Big Bang model. It suggests that the universe underwent an exponential expansion in the first fractions of a second after the Big Bang. This rapid inflation explains the uniformity of the cosmic microwave background, 
and the large-scale structure of the universe. There are other intriguing theories as well, such as the cyclic model, which proposes that the universe undergoes endless cycles of expansion and contraction, and the multiverse theory, which suggests the existence of multiple, possibly infinite universes with varying physical laws.